Heading east on Highway 158 out of Mojave. Within the first mile or so, you come across this sign alerting people to the Mojave Air and Space Port. The tagline is that imagination flies here. An era is coming to an end. We'll call it the Whit era at the Mojave Air and Space Board, a 14-year run. And we're here at the Mojave Air and Space Port, the Stuart L. Whit Event Center. And we're going to talk to Dr. Alan Peterson and the CEO of the Space Port. Stu Witt. So behind them here is an airplane that uh, the National Test Pilot School, I understand, donated to the airport. And I'm going to ask Dr. Peterson to explain the gift and then I'm going to ask CEO Witt how he liked the gift. Oh, good morning. Morning, Dr. Peterson, how are you today? I'm doing all right, yourself? Busy too, <laughs> like yeah. you. Yeah. yeah, tell me about the plane. Uh, this is one of four dual seat Drakens that the uh, National Test Pilot School uh, got back in the, in the 90s mm -hmm. uh, on a, uh, a deal that was worked with the Danish Air Force for some training and uh, cash and planes and those kind of things. Uh, they were retired uh, recently and we were looking for a way to extend their usefulness to uh, the uh, aviation community and we thought hey, it might be a great way to uh, donate them to some museums and some uh, airports uh -huh. so they could be uh, shared with all kinds of different folks out there. Who built them? Uh, these were built by uh, Saab way uh -huh. back in the in the uh, 60s uh -huh. uh, and uh, they were uh, acquired by the Danish Air Force um, in, in that same time frame. Uh -huh. And the two-seaters? These were two-seat trainers, yes. Um, they were, the vast majority were single-seat uh, fighters, but these were two-seat trainers. That we need two-seat trainers at the test pilot school in order to do instruction. Okay. Uh, test pilot instruction and flight test engineer instruction. So these aircraft, uh, as you can look at the sign as you go over there, for quite a few years, over a decade, these aircraft were used to train uh, future test pilots and flight test engineers from around the world. Uh-huh, I see. And do you use any of them still here at the no, test pilot school? No, the Drakens are totally no. retired. Okay. What took their place? Um, we're working on a couple different things. With T-38 uh, is one of them. Uh, MiG-21s is another. Uh, there's some other options out there, but uh, um, nothing's a direct one-for-one -one replacement. We just uh, uh, look at right. different things for different missions. Sure, sure, sure. Well, it uh, looks outstanding here by the uh, Witt Center, and uh, I think a lot of people will see it that way, that otherwise wouldn't have noticed it at all. Yeah, uh, I think so too. And uh, we donated another one to the Castle Air Museum up in uh, the Merced area of California. Mm -hmm. and another one over to the uh, the museum, the Aviation Museum, Vernon P. Saxon Jr. Museum over in uh, Boron. So uh -huh. there's several of them out there for people to be able to uh, stop and see and enjoy and, uh, uh, and their ability to contribute to the aviation community will continue into the future. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, now I want to talk to the recipient of the gift. Uh, Mr. Witt. Well, Mr. Witt, uh, and you didn't say no to this nice gift, I'm sure. Of course not. You never say no to a gift. Right. Uh, John, it's good to see you this morning, and uh, we were real pleased to receive this. One thing we've noticed since putting in Legacy Park uh, and other uh, improvements to the air and spaceport is that we have a, a healthy and vibrant international following. And there's not a day goes by when we don't have tens, if not hundreds, of visitors on the airport just driving in, want to see where all the historic events have occurred in civil aircraft development, and more notably in the last 10 years, and where Voyager was built and flown. And for Al and the school to donate this airplane, 
uh, is a big deal. Uh, th 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 I was just telling Al, uh, I, I go out and about every day, and literally there's not a day goes by I don't see somebody parked here with people taking pictures in front of this airplane. Uh -huh. And uh, th this is a, it, it's, it's cool to see an airplane, uh, yes, we call it on a stick in front of a, an event center. Uh, you go down to Jet Hawk Stadium and you see a Hornet. Well, you know, I happen to have flown that airplane, and, and to see an airplane on display in the valley and you go, yeah, I guess I'm getting old. You're seeing the airplane that you flew that's on a stick in front of a ballpark or, a, or an air station. Uh, it's a very nice thing for Al to do. He had a lot of choices where he could put these. Uh -huh. And now, this other thing that the school has done, uh, uh, one of Al's employees developed a driving tour that you can go online and, and take your cell phone and, and click on the driving tour at Mojave and it'll take you to different points on the airport and show you where various things occurred, are occurring, and significant things to view. And again, that, that's, that's all Al's doing. That's, that's pretty neat. Uh-huh, uh-huh. Well, I appreciate uh, your allowing the Roseman News into your busy schedule today. And uh, I've noticed over your four years here at the Test Pilot School, that you've made an effort to outreach to the community, especially high school students that might be interested in the aviation industry. And uh, yeah, I mean, like all businesses, we get approached by a lot of folks looking for uh, for help for various uh, uh, charitable organizations or activities and those kind of things. And we always like to help, but uh, we were looking for something for a little bit of a closer connection with the community. And we, we sat back and said, you know, what do we do? And what do we do better than anybody else that we could tie in with the community? And teaching about flight test and flight test engineering is, is what we do. And, uh, and so we thought, well, maybe there's a way to tie that in. So we did some research and looked at the, you know, what, what are the STEM programs that are out there. And there's not a huge STEM program here in the, right around the airport uh, mm -hmm. for the different schools. There's, there's some, some programs going on, but not, not a big one. So we decided to come up with the idea of a flight test camp where we would take one of our short courses that we do um, for our flight test community, condense it down a little bit and make it appropriate at the high school level to be able to bring in some high school students and introduce them to the uh, uh, concept of engineering in general, but flight test engineering specifically as a possible field of study in college and maybe even a career path uh, down the road. And when we set the camp up, we looked at it as like, we want to do some academics, we want to do some flying, but we also want to introduce them to the various industry, aerospace industries here at the Mojave Air and Spaceport so they can see that, hey, there's a vibrant industry with good jobs right here where they live. Um, so if you wanted to go to school and come back here and work, you could do that. And that, that there are jobs available in this area for people who grew up in this area, if you have the right skill sets. So um, we put together the program, uh, got it rolling. We got six high schools involved the first year um, with 12 kids. Uh, second year, 12 kids and uh, six teachers, and this last year we had 18 kids from about seven different high schools. So program's going really good. We always get great reviews. The kids really seem to like it, and uh, and the guys at, at the and gals at the school enjoy putting it on for them. Well, that's good planning because as Mr. Witt here transitions out of his tour of duty, 13 or 14 years here, those young people are going to be the ones that are going to take Mojave and Air and Space Board to the next level, I think. So. Yeah, I mean, that's what we're looking for. One of, one, of the, one of the challenges for everybody who's in this area, whether it be Edwards Air Force Base, Mojave Air and Spaceport, China Lake up to the north, is attracting good, qualified folks. And then once they're attracted and we get them here, keeping them here. And so what, uh, what better way to have a potential long-term uh, employee if it's somebody who's from the area, likes the area, wants to maybe move back to the area that they grew up in. So if we can get folks in that uh, are qualified uh, engineers and flight test engineers and technicians and technical folks from all different walks of life that from this area that get those skill sets, then maybe we can even improve their, re their retention and, uh, and recruiting back to the local area. Well, I'm sure you will. There's uh, something very, very exciting about uh, airplanes and flying and all of those kinds of things. I can remember riding in crop dusters on our dairy farm in Arizona. I'll never forget that. I don't know how old even I was, but uh, it was exciting, but I was too big. 
to fit in the cockpits of fighter planes, so I went a different direction. Yeah, but there you go. but the, hey, there's always there's all kinds of different rules out there for people of all different shapes and sizes. So. That's right. Anyway, thanks yeah. thanks very much for for your time hey, today, no and problem. best wishes in your continued duty there at the uh, board of the spaceport. All right. Well, thank you very much. Uh huh. Well, Mr. Witt, thank you so much for your valuable time today. Uh, you're coming to the end of your tour of duty here at Mojave Air and Spaceport after a expansive tour for 13 or 14 years of some marvelous highlights uh, in flight, in the commercialization of space. Uh, and I would really like to just document a few of those highlights that stick out in your mind. Um, what do you look back on as perhaps the starting point here for you in Mojave? Well, what attracted me to even apply was the legacy that was created by Dan Sabovich. And Dad, Dan had come to Mojave when it was dirt, uh, an unused airport basically. Uh, or a very underused county airport and created a California special district and it, what he basically brought was an attitude and an attitude of you can come to Mojave and affordably set up a business and develop and test in relative freedom and that's the the core principle that we've tried to preserve and grow and I went when I took over in 2002 and, and had a chance to uh, do two, two months, 60 days of discovery with the tenants, with the employees, and lay out a plan of what I thought was possible in 10 years. And then we created a picture, and that picture still exists in several places around town. And all we did was build the picture, but we took the attitude that was already set in motion by Dan and the team and we carried it forward and hopefully whoever picks up after me will continue to endorse the attitude but also continue to build a vision and build the vision for the future. Don't build my vision or Dan's vision, build the vision for the future and let Mojave continue to lead the industry, not follow the industry and as we say be the trailing edge of leading edge technology but to actually be on the leading edge of policy, of design and let it be driven by attitude. Well, that uh, takes a lot of courage, a lot of guts for somebody that's been a successful CEO of anything. Because no matter where they stop, there's lots left to do. Exciting things to do. But I think that you're right in saying that the new person coming up is going to want to exceed uh, your mark. And that's good. Wants to beat the record. And that's healthy. That's the way you get the best best that the new CEO has to have. Yeah, John, you've heard me say this in a number of forums, but people can stay in these jobs too long, and they, they start defending and creating the past as opposed to uh, listening, hearing great ideas, developing ideas on their own, and building the future. And I, my sense is there's about a 10-year half-life, and... After 10 years, you, you start slipping, and I don't know where that occurs with individual people, but you've got to be on the alert for it, 8 to 12 years. And I really meant what I said when I took this job that I was committed to 10 years. It's, I'm in my 14th year right now, and uh, I, I really mean what I say. It's time for new blood, fresh eyes. Uh, the next generation is upon us. The, the millenniums see things differently but they are passionate they're driven uh, and now with our we've got the numbers to back up where the industry is our business on the aviation side is now slightly I think one percentage point over half new space business uh, that was our goal we did it now we have to continue that and grow it and uh, uh, the new folks uh, the, the folks we're interviewing the the next generation that that is aligned with uh, where this industry where is, where it's headed. Uh, they've grown up with it. The, 
it's not the old guys that want to convert a traditional business with the new business. It's actually the people that have grown up in the new business and have some very strong ideas on how to move it forward while preserving general aviation, commercial aircraft type services, uh, training, and the like. It's a, it's, it's, a, it's a very unique puzzle that we have right here in the high desert and where we fit in with the military neighbors uh, uh, underneath the uh, restricted and uh, special use airspace known as 2508. It's, a, it's quite a unique scenario in the valley. And we're real lucky to be a part of it. And I've, John, I've been enormously lucky at this phase in my career to have a third bite at the apple to run yet another business and, and to have this opportunity. But you can't ever be afraid of stepping aside and let the next wave come on board and, and take over. I applaud them. And, and uh, we, we've had uh, a number of highly qualified applicants. And uh, I applaud my board for, uh, for very progressively uh, going out and uh, extending the invitation nationwide. Well, thank you for those thoughts. And uh, through the years, you've uh, done a good job of posting photographs up and down your hallway of uh, momentous moments in that 14-year history. And I wondered if you'd take a few moments and point out some of the photos to us and explain a little bit about them. Yeah, I can even do better than that. Uh, we got to start right over here on the counter and when people walk in here, they give us coins. And I mean, when Mr. Wolfowitz was the Assistant Secretary of Defense and he was the Assistant uh, Director at the CIA, uh, gave me one of his coins. Uh, ah, right here. Really? Uh, when Arnold Schwarzenegger gave me one of his coins, right here. <laughs> uh, General Lyle. Uh, there's one here from the CIA Director. Oh, oh here's Dick Rattan's Misty coin. Um, I think this is Mr. Wolfowitz. Yeah, right there. CIA. You know, isn't that amazing? That is. And we're talking about Mojave. <laughs> you, you keep reminding me of that, and I know it so well. But uh, and, uh, what a great tribute, though, to yeah. uh, to the last uh, 13 or 14 years. This is now. What are you going to do with these? You know, this. What am I? I, I I'm probably going to leave them right here. Some yeah. of this stuff is personal, but that's a piece of the spruce goose. Uh -huh. Piece of spruce. Really? That was given to me. Uh -huh. um, uh, there's just some trinkets that I've carried along the way that were family. Uh, I, want, I was on the A12 program years ago, and they made 12 A12 mark models. Oh. Notice there's no logo on it. No, and no, no. Was, Did uh, Marie Walker and Jim have I anything have, to do with that? Because they were making models. I have no idea. Like that. No idea. Huh. That was a. That was a program I was on 20 some years ago. Oh my gosh. 25 years ago. Mm. And that was canceled by then Secretary of Defense Cheney. Mm -hmm. uh, but they gave a few of the early test pilots a, a model. Mm -hmm. You uh, served as a test pilot on that? No, I, nobody never no, flew. Never but, flew. But oh, we, okay. were, we were developing systems on it when I was uh, building radars and, and forward, infra, forward looking infrared systems. Mm -hmm. uh, the General Lyles, four-star general, uh, gave me one of his coins. Uh -huh. uh, uh, Secretary Garcia, Secretary of the Navy, gave me a coin. And, and uh, you know, those, uh, those may not be a big deal to a lot of people, but we're talking about Mojave. We're talking about Mojave. We're we should never Mojave. forget that. And uh, right here in this office many times uh, with Mr. Branson, uh, the Ellisons, uh, I don't know, uh, Paul Allen down the ramp at the scale. Uh, it's sort of a, a pinch me moment when that occurs that you can't lose sight of the fact that we're talking about something that 40 years ago was just a dusty airport in literally the middle of nowhere. And over the course of that 40 years, in a very short period of time, has been put on an international stage and a national stage. Uh, and, and we still uh, accept the responsibility of giving people enormous leeway to take risk. And I will not uh, back away from the notion of defending that. Uh, I think if Washington had its way, we would, we would only do what Washington thought was safe. But that's not how humanity moves forward. Hmm. Uh, you've got to have places where people are allowed to use their brains, uh, 
their talents, their initiative, and you give them guidance, you give them permission. It doesn't mean you don't stop watching, but that's the only way you can achieve real breakthroughs in an industry. And this industry uh, has benefited greatly from the attitude in the aerospace valley uh, and the contributions to the nation. And I, I think Mojave's played a big role in that, especially on the attitude side. I agree with you, and I think uh, just uh, talking about it as a possibility sparks other people's imagination about the possibility that it can really happen. Yeah. And people start thinking about it. Yeah, I wish I had my Aviation Week cover out here. Usually I keep it handy that has the one advertisement we've bought through the years. and It says one word, permission. It's a full page, full page ad showing <laughs> the airport has one word, permission. Uh -huh. And then our logo at the bottom. And to me that, that says what we're all about. Uh huh. Well, maybe that's what should be on your tombstone. You know, that's not a bad thing, is it? <laughs> no, I've never seen it on, and I've seen a lot of famous tombstones. Yeah, you know, I, that's a question I ask a lot of people during interviews: is what would you like to have on your tombstone? What what legacy could you write in less than seven words? And you know, a lot of people never thought about that, John, as how they would care to be remembered. Yeah. And you know, at the end of the day, that's about all we have is our reputation and what we left behind. That's right. Um, and how you motivated others and, and you trained those that follow. And, and as you know, the last uh, two years, I've, I've uh, stepped aside in a, a, a very large part of the internal process uh, to give my crew a chance to grow and develop internally. It's fascinating to watch. Uh, this is a well-tuned machine. Uh, you've, you've watched as we've gone through a financial issue yeah. and how we've come out the other side of that. And you saw us deal with it straight on. It, tell you exactly where we were. Uh, it's the only way I know how to be, do business. It, and I, like I tell my wife when we raised our kids, when the kids have issues, you can't ignore them. The only one thing you can do is deal with it. Yeah. On. yeah. This is where we are. This is what we need to do and inch our way out of this. But uh, uh, understanding and admitting they have, there's a problem or uh, 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 something you want to do and you can write it down and draw a picture of it, you can probably build it. Mm -hmm. And And so that's been the total attitude internally and uh, for my team, uh, Karina, uh, what a brilliant, brilliant person. Mm -hmm. And what she and her husband did to move from Washington to, to Mojave uh, after working with us in 2007 as an intern at MIT mm -hmm. and then coming out here and, and letting us have the benefit of her uh, background in finance and as a COO of two startups. And, you know, most people don't know about Karina, and I hope you interview her sometime. Ask her how she paid for her college. Hmm. She ran a locksmith company. <laughs> she was a locksmith. Really? And I, I said, you don't have, when we interviewed her, I said, you don't have any idea how important that is. I mean, I grew up the son of a farmer, raised hogs and cows and had a store, a dump truck, a backhoe. And we all knew how to run everything. Mm -hmm. And, you know, in a place like this, it's important to know how to do something mechanical because the, the place is very industrial, mm -hmm. and it, but it also is a business. And mm -hmm. having a blend of those two skills mm -hmm. is very important. And that's, I think, when I look back at uh, what was really important in my background, yeah, it was nice that I was a pilot, mm -hmm. but it certainly wasn't essential. Mm -hmm. It was nice. Mm. And it was nice that I'd worked in flight test, mm. but this is a business, mm -hmm. and it's about people mm -hmm. and closing deals and being a valued partner with anybody who wants to come here. Uh, I would say the toolkit of being deep in business knowledge, understanding the principles of an airport and, and flight test, and uh, where this airport fits in a new industry and a traditional industry and our percentages, uh, that is, are the key building blocks of a very successful future. <laughs> and I don't know who's going to get this job going forward, <laughs> but I know uh, the team is uh, is operating as a real team. <laughs> you see it. I know you're here every couple of weeks and you've had a chance to see it over time. Yep. Develop. Yep. Um, anyway, let's go take a look at some photographs down the hall. You know, we, we look around and the, the work that 
Mastin has done here at the airport and some of the images that we captured with the moon in the background. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Mr. McCarthy's many visits here to the airport, they have certainly slowed down since he's become the leader, but we've been very fortunate to have Mr. Thomas and Mr. McCarthy as our representatives and uh, kept a very close personal relationship with the airport through Dan's tenure and mine. Mm -hmm. um, frankly, the, the work that Kathy Hansen did on, on uh, building our image, broadening our reach uh, through general aviation, warbirds, and, uh, and promoting the airport in general to the local community through playing crazy, I, 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 I tip my hat to her. Uh, the work at x -Corps and the number of rocket tests that x -Corps and Maston and Scaled and Virgin and Whitting Hill and Firestar and so many others have generated. I mean, Mojave is, is the testing hub of that industry currently and numerically. It's, it's ridiculous how many rocket tests are conducted in Mojave uh, each day when if you go around the world or we may be 10 to 1 yeah. of the ones and then sure. the Rutan brothers. <coughs> oh, the Rutan era, sure. And this, this image is just welded in my mind with Brian Benning standing on the top of the spaceship and Paul Allen, Burt Rutan, and Richard Branson riding in the back of the pickup. I mean, it it's so Mojave. Uh, and then Kevin Mickey, uh, uh, Jim Scott, and me on the, on the NBC booth that morning uh, providing color commentary during the flights. And I mean, it just, what a great relationship it's been working with Kevin and now he's the president of SCALE. Yeah. And watching his growth and development over, over the course of 14 years. And what a great partner he has been uh, as he's grown that business to well over 600, 600 people right here in Mojave. My gosh, yeah. And then of course, uh, the benefit of uh, the legacy of Bert and, and Dick and the, and the Rutan Aircraft Factory choosing Mojave as its initial home. Uh, you know, I tell you, Dan and I get a lot of credit for what was built in Mojave, but it sure helps when you have a rock star like Bert Rutan decide to set up shop in your backyard. Well, and when you have Irene and George, the parents, yeah. that uh, drove them in the station wagon on the dirt roads, well, they could test the the airplanes, the yep. model airplanes they were building, and uh, and then stay connected with the community when they became famous. That yeah, helped and, a lot. And then you know, uh, for Bert to take his mom's ashes to space in yeah. Spaceship One, uh, and I, I even had three silver dollars, which I still have, that I flew on Spaceship One because he came around and asked. He needed several hundred pounds of ballast, huh. and so I chunked in a couple of things that were important to me. They were coins. My dad and I both collected silver coins, Morgans, and, and so I flew three silver dollars. Uh, I have three cents. Guess where those are going to go? Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. You know, then we have other, other folks, I mean, Jules uh, Tizard, a PhD in astrophysics out of the UK, works one of the initial hires at Virgin. and. Jules is a real adventure seeker. She decided to run the North Pole Marathon. Well, now, if you stop and think about that, you go, wait, the North Pole is water and ice. So you have to go there during the time of year when the ice is thick enough, you can land an airplane. And then you're going to have to set out a course and hope the ice doesn't move too far so you're still at the North Pole. And she and a group of people went to the North Pole in 2010, uh -huh. created an adventure, and then ran a 26-mile marathon on the ice on the North Pole. And she wore a logo from Mojave, and, and, uh, and now you got other kids like Elliot and others that go to Oshkosh and uh, take our logo and, 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 and uh, show it around the world. Uh, there's a lot of ways to extend your logo. That's right. And it's always, it's always a, a compliment when other people want to share in the local success and take it with them. True, true. As an identity. Mm -hmm. Marie put together after the after the Spaceship Two flights and bringing a thousand plus kids onto the airport every year, yeah. has uh, taken on its own momentum. And it's, I think it's one of those intangibles, uh, lar largely like uh, Kathy does with Plane Crazy, that you're able to uh, bring the community on the journey with you. You know, now there's 
12 years of kids. That means kids that were in kindergarten now graduated and they were all part of something at the airport that they wouldn't have had a chance to do because there's, I will tell you, there's an enormous disconnect between the community and this airport and that's one of the, the tangible ways, plane crazy and, and uh, the intermediate space challenge where you can keep that connection. Well, that's right, and uh, she did a marvelous job getting all of the elementary schools and uh, and uh, teachers involved, and uh, the kids so enjoyed it. I can remember. Oh, it's electric out there every year. That was the first meeting I held in my office that we refurbished, and everybody wanted to know why I was taking on the reconstruction of this building. Well, the windows were broken out in my office. It wasn't an office in. Really? It didn't have any furniture. It had a light hanging from a cord. Mm -hmm. And we had no executive look. And I thought if we were going to change attitudes for the future, we needed to start acting like the future and acting and looking like a place that people would want to invest. Mm -hmm. And if we were really going to attract uh, the high net worth investor because the government's broke. I don't know if anybody's noticed that, but the government's ability to fund research and development is largely over. And so it, we saw this in 2002, and we, in order for us to compete and play in that sandbox, we needed to internally uh, clean up our own act and, and show better. So we, we chose to own labor, build out this building, and thank goodness we had Mel Langford and his expertise as a, a construction expert. And uh, he basically became the architect and the construction manager, and we used internal labor and town labor to build out this building and many others on the airport, but to give us a totally different look and feel. And it became infectious. You saw the other companies spending millions of dollars upgrading their facilities. And so it goes back to the old adage that uh, good ideas have their own momentum. Yeah. And then Mr. Thomas came and met with me a couple times, uh, Mr. Ashburn, uh, when he's assemblyman and then senator. Uh, of course, the noteworthy pictures. Uh, a couple times a year we get the, the key stakeholders of the aerospace and the space communities together with Mr. McCarthy or Mr. Thomas here in this room. And we spend a couple hours together. It's very important for our representative to have private time collectively with a core of a new industry to where he can carry that expertise in the shape of policy uh, at a national level. Mm -hmm. And then, uh, of course, uh, being invited to his uh, appointment into leadership uh, when he uh, was became a leader in Congress is very nice of Mr. McCarthy to invite me to that. Uh, when Mr. We went to see Mr. Schwarzenegger, is very kind to Bert. Uh, and uh, Paul Allen to include me in that invitation to to uh, meet with the governor in his office. And then uh, down the bottom right, of course, uh, you never know the friends you're going to make in this any business, but uh, meeting Governor Richardson has been a real highlight of my life and staying, not in close contact, but Mr. Richardson knows how to find me and I know how to find him, and, and, and we always take each other's calls. It's, it's fun. Mm -hmm. and, uh, uh, still, it, acutely interested in, in uh, developing uh, this new industry mm -hmm. and, and not losing the When momentum. you say the, the new industry, uh, define that a little tighter for me. You mean the commercialization of space. That's correct. And, uh, mm -hmm. and actually being very bold 10 years ago on investing in infrastructure that could serve the needs of this new market. Mm -hmm. We didn't know if there's going to be a market. But I'll tell you, when Orbital Sciences and SpaceX have developed brand new systems that are now carrying cargo to the International Space Station. That's yeah. a new industry and we're part of it. Yeah. Uh, to be recognized uh, by the assembly, by Senator Boxer, Senator Feinstein, and the county boards and the assembly and the state senate uh, with certificates and awards through the years. You know, you could have told me, John, that that would be part of running this place, and I would have laughed. I'd said, yeah, right, we're talking about Mojave. Hmm. But it's, it's, a, it's interesting to me how uh, our leaders in Sacramento, even though those in Washington, uh, are very messy 
places to do business. In fact, I tell people every time I go to both, I, I, I come home, I feel like I need a good shower. <laughs> but the other side of it is, if you're successful, they need to share in that success. And they like having uh, touch points into those successes in their state. And it really helps your cause when you need policy. If you've been successful and you have a track record of hard work and success, how much easier it is to formulate policy and get it doesn't matter whether you're Republican or Democrat, they want to be a part of your success. Yeah. And so it starts with us and it will continue to be with us well into the future. That regardless of who the leaders are, they will want to be a part of the success of the Aerospace Valley. And I applaud the work of the EV Board of Trade, Dal Hoffman uh, and so many others. Uh, oh man, I just start going down the list. Kathy, Vicky, uh, so many, uh, but um, who put together the visits in Sacramento and Washington to promote the Valley and our interests. Uh, those are very timely, uh, very well received because we've had so many successes in the Valley. Well, I hear you saying leadership, leadership and sharing leadership. And uh, it seems to me as a journalist that, that that's what happened here. That uh, leadership and sharing leadership, uh, what's your feeling on that? Well, you know, I get a lot of credit that just frankly isn't mine. It, it comes to me because I'm the boss here, but uh, I hear a good idea. It's my job to recognize it, develop it, put it into action and, and train the team. A lot of the good ideas come from my team. A lot of them come from my tenants. A lot of them I hear by going places, seeing how other people do business. Yeah. But sharing in the in the leadership, I mean, John, I can't run this airport by myself. It's got a lot of moving parts. Yeah. And I, I put my folks in school. I, I, I let them run their departments. Uh, Karina has run the day-to-day -day for the last year and a half, two years, and, and done a marvelous job. Mm. Uh, and even had Max in even, between. That's right, even had Max, a <laughs> uh, new member of the family. You know, another, well, while everything else was going on in 04, so was uh, Global Flyer. Yeah. And it was a remarkable time by Scale Composites where they built four different airplanes in two years, and all of them flight tested successfully and met their uh, goals. One of them went to space three times, one of them went around the world twice. One was a Toyota airplane and one was the carrier airplane for the spaceship. Yeah. And uh, just fascinating, uh, the mm -hmm. different pictures. And then when Marion Blakey and Patty Gray Smith brought us our first license in 2004, they flew it out on a Saturday, I believe, and uh, handed it to us in person four days before uh, Bert uh, flew the first uh, flight to space in Spaceship One. Amazing, amazing. And this is a little montage up here, I guess. Of yeah. Uh, different uh, photos that they've different taken. Different images and time. Uh, uh huh. A young version of me. Yeah. Yeah, for sure, for sure. Now, Stu, you've been through triumph and tragedy. What are you going to tell the man that's going to, or woman, that's going to sit in your spot? What are you going to tell them that's going to pull them through those kind of times? Well, that's pretty easy to answer. Uh, for anybody who's run a business, uh, it's just part of it. You, you have good days, you have not good days. But you have days. And the toolkit that I'm looking for, and I've recommended to the board that's the most important part, is a skill set that says you don't have to know the answers to everything the day it walks in the door. But you have to have the ability to recognize parts of it that you've seen before. And everything is different. Uh, don't be afraid to invoke the 24-hour rule or the 72-hour rule. Some things require an immediate response. Don't be afraid to make a decision. But also don't be afraid to recognize that maybe you don't have to make that decision at this moment and gather some more data, gather your thoughts. And again, if anybody thinks there's a human out there that knows how to run a place like this the day they get here, that's foolish thinking. I, 
I have told you and others I've never been qualified for a job the day I got it. I think most honest people will tell you that. And ironically, where the business is today, I'm not sure I would have been qualified to take it over 14 years ago. Mm. Mm -hmm. uh, I would certainly have much more to learn because mm -hmm. the business has evolved. Mm -hmm. And that's another reason to take a step back and say, has the business outgrown my skills? And my recommendation to whoever gets this position uh, is very simple. Don't be afraid to make the decision that needs to be made. Don't be afraid to delay a decision that can wait. But at the end of the day, don't be afraid to make the decision. Mm -hmm. And don't be afraid to draw a picture of an exit strategy very early on in your tenure mm. and stick to it. That may be the best plan you've ever written. Mm. And I have advised people that for years in their businesses. The mm. best plan you write is not your entry plan, it's your exit plan. Mm. If you don't create the image of what you're looking for as an exit strategy, you won't recognize it when you see it. Mm -hmm. And that's where many businesses fail. Mm -hmm. Because as a founder of a different era, mm -hmm. uh, you've got to recognize when your effectiveness as the founder of that area is nearing a sunset, mm -hmm. and when your value may be better served somewhere else. Mm -hmm. And I think many businesses suffer from CEOs or leadership that outlive their usefulness. Mm -hmm. And you shouldn't be afraid of that. Mm -hmm. And uh, so my, my guidance is pretty simple. Mm -hmm. Don't be afraid to make a decision. Mm -hmm. Recognize when the timing's on your side for that decision. Mm -hmm. And uh, don't be afraid to make a plan that defines your exit strategy. Mm -hmm. Well, I'm sure Mojave Air and Spaceport is uh going to be a major player in the commercialization space and uh, people will look at those pictures on the wall that we looked at and say those those were the golden era but uh, the golden era probably is just around the corner yeah you know everybody talks about the good old days and uh, wow I, I just hope every generation in front of us uh, my kids grandkids. I hope they all live a life in America where they can talk about their good old days. Mm -hmm. And the good old days are always in front of us. Yeah. And uh, I think the only way you can ensure that is if you ensure there are places like this where people are allowed to create the good old days. Yeah. Yeah. And you've had a good supportive board of directors. Yeah that uh, supported your vision or your definition of the vision. I think they all had it in their hearts, the, vi the idea, but uh, it had to be defined. And I think the board members that have served have, have bought into that and, and encouraged it along over the years. I, I, yeah. So in, it, it, at first it was a, a tough because they didn't know me. Yeah. They didn't know my track record. They didn't know skills. I didn't know them. They were deathly afraid that I was going to run in and change everything. Uh, and we have changed some things. I mean, we've, we've, we've created a new industry. We've been a part of a new industry's growth. And when I look at the numbers, the numbers, uh, frankly, uh, back up my actions because it's now 50% of our business. Yeah. What would we have if we hadn't have gone after that and helped been a plank holder in a new industry? Yeah. And change is difficult. The next person who come in will have a different idea, a different set of ideas and goals. And hopefully their board will recognize that as, you know, that's worth a shot. Yeah. yeah. Uh, and go with it. Yeah. Uh, I can't be afraid of what's around the corner. Well, and uh, you, you have lived by that. And I want to thank you publicly for being open to the media at all the time at all times being receptive. Um, certain things uh, became delicate, but you never uh, withheld a punch or didn't answer a question. And, and we appreciate, appreciate that. 
and want to wish you well in I keep saying you got to write that ebook because I want to read it <laughs> I want to see it but uh, thank you so much for what you've done for the public what you've done for all the people all the people in Mojave all the people in Roseman all the people in the country all the people in the world Thanks, you know you've you've done your part thank you very much you're welcome